how we perceive ourselves as being held by the world is very much reflective of how we were held in the beginning. What were the capabilities, degree of presence, awareness, self-knowledge, attunement, lack of stress of our earliest caregivers? So this situation, well, the world is not holding us the way we've managed it so far is actually an opportunity for all of us to feel into what it was like to how and to how we were held at the very beginnings. And I know, and then I know that the panic, for example, I experienced has nothing to do with writing a book and whether or not can I, can I really do this or not. I mean, that's a good question, but it's no cause for panic. It's a memory that goes back to my very beginnings. And as I was writing this book, I was rereading my mother's diary. I'm not going to go into how I found it or so on, but my mother kept a diary in my first year and a half of life, very intermittent diary because we were Jews living under the Nazis in Hungary. So she didn't get her chance to write very much. But and I've talked about some of this publicly already. There was the time where she had to give me to a stranger in the street, didn't see me for six weeks. Well, that would be a cause for panic for me. And she did that to save my life. So some of that panic is showing up for me now. But you know, there was something I didn't realize. I was reading her diary and when I was three weeks old, she talks about how I was crying from 12.30 in the morning till two o'clock till she finally fed me. Because you see, the doctor's advice in those days was that you don't feed the baby when he wants to be fed. You feed him on schedule. And uh, Dr. Spock, the great Benjamin Spock, who wrote his book on child parenting two years after I was born. But even he um, um, advised mothers against giving in to the tyranny of the infant, as he called it, who wanted to be picked up at night. Now, actually, Spock did suggest um, feeding the baby when the baby wanted to be fed. But in terms of not picking him up when he was being fed and he's crying, he said, no, don't give in to the tyranny of the infant. Just say good night quietly and walk out of the room. But well, what's it like for a small infant to be left alone in the dark? When every animal and all Aboriginal peoples hold their babies all the time. And this was done by loving mothers all over the world because that was the doctor's advice and sometimes still is the doctor's advice. That's a state of panic. And it's what D.W. Winnicott, the British child psychiatrist called primitive agony. So some of us may be experiencing some of that primitive agony because of the crises that are upon us right now. That's an opportunity to get into the present. That's an opportunity to realize, oh, this, and, this is not about what it's about. This is actually about something that probably happened to me a long time before, and I've been carrying it all my life. So here's an opportunity to get in touch with it, to see it for what it is, not to let it control me, not to let it get me down, but to create the awareness around it that can hold it, that can hold it. And from that point of view, um, I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. I mean, I suppose I could keep talking for the next three hours, but I'm not sure how useful that would be. But I'll end with a citation, which, I almost remember verbatim, but it may not be quite verbatim, by one of the teachers that I follow uh, called A.H. Almas, known to many of you. And he said that the most difficult things, the most problematic situ situations in your life are also the most compassionate because they lead you to what's not working. They get you to see um, what is not aligned in your life. 
And from that point of view, we can look upon this virus. And yes, even the tragedies that beset us is in a sense, compassionate things. Not that there was anything compassionate about the way George Lloyd died, but that if, if, if it teaches us the absolute necessity of a compassion for everyone, including ourselves, then perhaps it will have been a compassionate thing.